All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Navigate Your Future, Budgeting for College. We'd like to start by introducing ourselves. My name is Milan, and we also have Alexis with us today. Before we get started, we wanted to go over some Zoom features. Your mic and video have been muted and turned off. You'll be able to use the chat feature, which is located at the bottom of your screen. If you select the chat icon, a box should pop up over to the side. If you have any questions, we do ask that you type it into the chat as we will have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. In today's presentation, we are going to look at five steps that you can explore to set yourself up for financial success as it relates to navigating your future college and career. The first step is to learn the language. The second step is to budget. The third step is to save. The fourth step is to consider building credit and control debt. And lastly, the fifth step is to think about how you are going to protect your assets. Before we get started, we wanted to state that this presentation is for information purposes only. Speak to your parents, guidance counselors, and seek a licensed professional for any sort of financial advice. All right, so the first step in navigating your finances and pursuing higher education is to learn and understand the language. Our goal is for you to build a foundation of financial capability. By this, we mean that you have the knowledge and tools to manage your money. Hopefully you can walk away from this presentation with one piece of information that you can implement in your strategy to navigate your future college and career goals. Financial education is nothing without behavioral change. Thinking about how you'll navigate your future college and career goals can at times feel daunting. Just remember, don't get overwhelmed with the big picture. Small steps and changes can lead to big results. Focus on a few small steps you can implement into your strategy, then you can add a few more steps and changes next year and build from there. Here are some key terms that you should understand when navigating your finances while pursuing higher education. Career refers to the, or credit refers to the amount of money you're able to borrow to purchase goods and services. Credit is extended to you from a credit grantor with which you make an agreement to pay back the amount spent plus applicable interest and fees within an agreed upon time. Federal student aid refers to the aid from the government in the form of grants, loans, and or work study programs to assist students with college or career school. Students have to complete the FAFSA form in order to apply for this aid. Financial aid refers to the money that can be used to help pay for college or career school. Grant is a monetary gift for people pursuing higher education. It is often based on financial need and does not need to be repaid, unless, for example, you withdraw from school without completing a degree or owe a refund. Interest is a loan expense charged for the use of borrowed money. Interest is paid by a borrower to a lender. The expense is calculated as a percentage of the unpaid principal amount of the loan. Principal amount is the initial loan amount. Scholarships are, grant, are gifts that don't have to be repaid and are often designed to help students pay for a college degree. They can be a one-time gift or they might be renewable depending on the scholarship. Work study provides part-time jobs for undergraduates and graduate students with financial need. This program encourages community service work and work related to your field of study. To receive funds, you will need to be awarded work study and secure a job. Loans and grants and scholarships are two different methods of paying for college. Loans are money that must be paid back with interest to the lending institution. The lending institution might be a bank or the federal government. Grants and scholarships are often gifts given to students that do, not, do, that do not need to be paid back unless otherwise stipulated. Students will often have to, pay, to have to apply for this financial aid and meet their requirements. Scholarships can be found through the school as well as through private organizations.
Financial aid can come from many sources in both the public and private sectors. Universities and colleges can provide both scholarships and financial aid as well. Typically, money lending institutions will require that a student fill out an application demonstrating their need for the aid. The most common among these applications is the FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So now that you've made it beyond the college or university admissions requirements, you might be wondering, but how much does college cost? Tuition and fee costs of attending colleges and universities vary, wild, vary wildly among schools depending on what type of college or university you're planning on attending. There are two-year community colleges, four-year public in-state universities, four-year public out-of-state universities, and four-year private nonprofit universities. How much does college cost? Since there are four broad categories of colleges and universities, the costs do tend to vary significantly. According to Trends in College Pricing 2020, a report released on, in November 2019 by collegeboard.org, it shows that college and university costs continue to increase. Costs have increased by 2.3% from the previous year. According to this um, report, two-year community colleges averaged about uh, $3,730. Um, however, this cost does not include room and board for community colleges. Um, a four-year public university that is in-state typically runs about $21,950. A four-year public university out-of-state typically is um, $38,330. And then a four-year private nonprofit university um, averages about $49,870. Um, and like we said, this is an average, so the cost might change depending on the state, the university, or um, any scholarships or grants that you have. In addition to these costs, there are other ma major cost considerations. These include tuition and fee, fees, books and supplies, room and board, and this can include living on campus or off of campus. Um, personal expenses such as clothing, personal hygiene, laundry, health insurance, etc., and transportation. You might not have all the answers to these questions yet, but these will be things to determine sooner rather than later. Many of these categories might be funded by parents, grandparents, grants, or scholarships. Hey, uh, just a quick question for y'all. Um, someone wanted to know if those prices were per semester. It is by year. So moving on to the second step. The second step is budgeting your finances in order to save. Setting financial goals can help you when it comes to setting a budget and saving for your future. Your goals are why you are making a budget and sticking to it. And a strong why will help you when you have to make those small day-to-day -day decisions. So think about some of your own goals and what, the, what those might be. Um, as far as short-term goals, it could be something such as putting money away towards a rainy day fund. Long-term goal could be something such as paying off a student loan and being debt-free in 10 to 15 years. It's okay if you can't think of anything while in this presentation. Uh, you will figure it out or figure out a few goals as you go through your budgeting process. So next, we'll discuss some strategies to meet those goals. When it comes to reaching your goals, are you doing or wishing? The difference is doers put action to their goals and doers are much more likely to reach their goals and achieve their dreams. If you're a doer, you're, mo you're more likely to track spending, live within your means, stick to a budget, pay off credit cards in a timely way, deposit money into savings each month. Navigating your future requires that you begin to track where your money is going and set up a budget and make some small changes to begin to save. 
Tracking your daily spending habits is a very important first step to creating an accurate budget and the only way to really learn where your money is going. So to reiterate, study your spending habits, track your daily expenses, log your day-to-day -day spending for a month, include everything you purchase, even if it's something super small. Um, here's a fun tip. Since filling out forms isn't always fun um, or something that you remember to do, take a selfie with every purchase, no matter how small. You will have a visual record of the items purchased to refer to later in your budget practice. If tracking your day-to-day -day spending sounds overwhelming, here's an option. Start small and track all purchases for a week to get motivated to really budget. So when you're creating your personal budget, always consider your fixed and flexible expenses. Focus on making choices that are within your budget or choices that allow you to save money. So scan this shopping basket and think about how you can save money. What budget would you consider flexible and by how much would you adjust that budget to save? You can type your answer in the chat. The key takeaway is that your choices affects costs. So practice makes perfect. Making a budget is a skill that will last a lifetime. Use this table to get started. So the first thing you want to do is write down your income. It might be an allowance from your parents or money that you earn from a job. The second thing is to record that record the money that you spend. So include everything from downloads to snacks to clothing and more expensive items. And remember that when your income is greater than your expenses, you can save money for a future goal. So look for places to reduce your spending and start saving. So while there are several online budgeting templates that you can find along with budgeting apps, we wanted to empower you to create your own budgets using Google Sheets. To get started, you'll need a Google account. If you have one, you can log into your account and follow along. Mind you, due to time restrictions, this will be a sped up tutorial, but let's go ahead and get started. Log into your Google account. Go to your Google Drive. You can create a new Google Sheets uh, document. I already have one started. So Google Sheets is a web-based free application that you can access from any device. Let's look at some common terms you have a cell. So a cell is a single data point or element in a spreadsheet. A column is a vertical set of cells. A row is a horizontal set of cells. Your range is a selection of cells extending across a row, column, or both. You also can use functions, which is a built-in operation from the spreadsheet. It can be used to calculate cell, row, or range values, and manipulate data. There's also formulas that, and these are a combination of functions, cells, rows, columns, and ranges used to obtain a specific result. You have your tools at the top, such as your border creation, um, which helps you create borders around your cells, and your merge tool, which merge cells together to create a larger cell, along with your currency and your um, percentage formatting tool. These are the tools we'll mainly use to create our spreadsheet today. So let's jump in and create the skeleton of our budget. So the first thing you're going to want to think about is do you want your budget to be a weekly, monthly, or yearly budget? We're going to create a monthly budget in this program. The second thing you're going to want to think about is what exactly do you want your budget to show? So this budget is going to have four tables showing our expenses, 
our income, our totals, and our daily spending. So when you create your table, you're going to want to label it. We'll do this by creating a banner. So select five cells across and using the merge tool, merge those cells to create one larger cell. And we're going to label this August. Next, we'll create the headers for our table. We'll have an expenses column. We'll also have a planned column. We'll have an actual column, a difference column, and a percent of income. Next, let's make our table stand out using our borders tool. So I would like to create a border around that banner and let's create some borders around our, oops, not that. Let's create some borders around our, um, our headers. And then I'll scroll down and I'll add a totals row and uh, let's go ahead and just create a border around all of this. To separate the expenses and plans, you'll just highlight that column and create a right border. And then to separate the totals, you can add a top border. All right, so when you're done creating your, um, your tables, it will look something like this. And you can include a savings table as well. Um, I forgot to include that, but we'll go ahead and move along. So the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to list our monthly expenses in each row. So we'll have food, home, transportation, school, and clothing. You'll want to plan your budget, so let's plug in some numbers into the planned column for each expense. So for August, I plan on spending $150 on food, um, about $300 on home rent, $50 on transportation, $100 on school, and $50 on clothing. Let's format these numbers as currency. So what you'll do is you'll highlight that entire column and you can actually highlight across and then just select that currency tool. Okay, so our first function is going to be the sum function. This adds cells together. So select the first cell in the totals row in that planned column and type equals sum, open parentheses, and then you're going to left click that first cell in the column and while left clicking, scroll your mouse down to um, that last cell right before total and hit enter. This is, will tally up um, so this is going to tally up all of the numbers in your planned column. So let's do that for the remaining columns. So again, to tally up um, each cell, you'll hit equals, sum, open, parentheses, and then scroll down. Oops, didn't get it all. Let's try that again. And then hit enter. And We'll do that for difference as well. All right, now let's calculate the difference. So select the first cell in your difference column, type equals, then select the first cell under your planned column and type minus and then 
select that first cell in your actual column. Excuse me, and then hit enter. So because our actual column, um, that cell isn't populated, it won't subtract anything. Um, so let's try that again for home. So type equals and then select planned minus actual and then hit enter. So you can type in this function for each um, row or what you could do is you can copy that function to um, the cells beneath it and the way you do this is you hover your mouse over that blue square at the um, bottom right corner and you'll see that crosshair symbol come up. When that comes up you'll left click and scroll all the way down and then that will apply the, um, the function to the highlighted cells. Okay so next let's plan the percentage of income. To do this you'll have to complete your income table at least the planned column, uh, you can plug in your actual income as you receive payment. So let's say I have a part-time job where I'm going to be making $600. And then I have a second um, secondary source of income. And I'm going to be making $100 um, pet sitting my neighbor's dog. So let's format these cells, and then let's add up our, um, our income using that sum function. So again, what you'll type is equal, sum, open bracket, and then select all the cells in that planned column. And that gives us a tally of $700. Let's do this for our actual and difference columns as well. So equal, oops, sum, and then hit enter, and then equal, sum, and left click, scroll all the way down and hit enter. Okay, so now that we've got our income table figured out, Let's calculate the percentage of income in our expenses table. So we'll go back to our expenses and we'll select that first cell under percentage of income. And then we'll type equals and then select the first cell under the column planned. And then you're going to hit um, a forward slash and then you'll type in 700 because that's your total planned income for the month and hit enter. So what that does is it automatically formats it as currency, but if you have that cell selected, you can go ahead and come up to the tools bar and select that format as percentage and that gives you a format or that gives you a percentage, I should say. So let's try doing that for the um, home row. So to find our percentage of income, we'll select equals, Select that cell under planned, divided by 700 and hit enter. And then we'll just format that as a percentage. So to copy this formula, you can hover your mouse over that blue square box and left click and scroll down and that should apply that formula to the remaining rows. Um, and then I forgot to add the sum, so let's go ahead and tally up this column. So it's equals sum, open parentheses, and then we'll select everything in that column and hit enter. Alrighty, so now that we've played around with our um, August expenses table, let's take a look at our totals table. So here's a quick tip. Um, instead of plugging, instead of typing in the numbers, um, what you could do is you could quickly plug in the numbers for your planned income and planned expenses by simply selecting the cell. So select the first cell under plan that correlates with income and then type in equals and then head over to your source of income and select that box 
um, that is uh, in your planned column for totals and then hit enter. So that automatically populates that cell with the totals. And you can do that for expenses as well. So equals and then head over to your expenses and select that total cell and then hit enter. All right. And to figure out the what your planned expenses and income as far as the totals go, what you're going to do is you're going to use the subtraction function. So hit equals and then select income minus expenses and then hit enter and that'll give you a number. Okay, let's take a look at our daily spending table. So with the daily spending, you have your date, a description, amount, and category. You'll notice the description, we ended up using the merge tool. So that's where you select two cells and you can quickly merge them together, giving you space to type in um, more information. Okay, so with the date, you can simply key in the date. And then there's various ways of doing this. Um, you can format the cell using your format uh, numbers and then date, or you can, let me key in the date again. Oops, that didn't, let's do this. Format, go to numbers and then hit date. And then once you do that, you can copy that to the remaining cells in that column. So let me try that. Um, hover over so you get that crosshair and then left click and drag it all the way down. Um, there you go. And then let me do that once more. Okay, perfect. So we've got all of the dates figured out for August. All right. So the next thing we're going to want to do is create a drop down menu under the category col column. So category is referring to our expenses in our um, monthly expense table. So the way you format that is you're going to select that first cell for August 1st, 2020. You're going to highlight, actually you can highlight all of the cells. So let's try that. So left click that cell and scroll all the way down while left clicking. Um, and then we're going to come up here to our tools, click select data, and then go to data validation. So this is going to give us a list from a range and this is what we want. Um, so what we're going to do is the list from the range that we're pulling from is from column A in our expenses table. So select that box and then take your mouse over to your expenses and highlight and select all. So it's the left click and then you'll drag all the way down and then you'll hit enter or excuse me, okay. And we only want to use the expenses in our um, monthly expenses table. So we're going to select reject input and then hit save. And what that does is it pulls everything from column A in your expenses table and adds it to your daily spending table. So if I were to add a new expense halfway through the month, let's say I got a new pet, um, it will automatically populate our category with that new expense. So that's a pretty neat trick, um, I would say, that you can use to help you save time. All right, Melinda, the last... I mm -hmm. get a question about um, sure. the um, category thing again. Sure, let, let me try that. Okay, so what you could do is you will select um, the first cell under category, and then you'll go up to data and then select data validation. And then 
it's going the criteria is list from range there are other options but i'm going to be using list from range and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your monthly expense table and select all of your expenses under the expense row so it's left clicking that first cell and then while you're left clicking drag your mouse down all the way until right before you hit total and then you click OK and then because we only want to use the expenses from that table you're going to want to select reject input and then select save and that will help you format your category to reflect a drop down menu did that help I hope that helped. Um, if I'm going too fast, that is okay. Um, we will be sending out a video recording of this after the presentation, um, I would say in about a day or two. Um, so you'll have this a video recording of this presentation to uh, look back on as you're creating your um, monthly budget. Okay, so the last step that I would like to show you guys is um, a formula that will have your daily spending table communicating with your monthly expenses table. And to do this, we're going to use the sum if formula. So the way you do this is you go to your expenses table and you select that first cell under your column um, that's labeled actual. Oh, I spell actual wrong. Let me quickly. All right. <laughs> okay, so you'll select that first cell under actual, and then you're going to type in equals sum if, um, oops, open parentheses, and then you're going to left click and highlight the cells under categories and scroll all the way down. And then you're going to type in a comma. And then you're going to type in the expense for that row. So we're focusing on food. So in quotations, type in food. And then you're going to type a comma. And then you're going to left click and highlight the cells under the amount column in your daily expenses. So let's do that. And then once you've done that, go ahead and hit enter. So what this is doing is your monthly expense table is looking for anything that that's categorized as food in your daily spending table. And it's looking for that amount and it's going to plug it into the actual column. So let's say on August 1st, I bought some pizza and I spent dollars I'm going to categorize that as food and if we've done the um, formula correctly it should automatically populate let me try that again let's say I bought um, Jimmy John's and I spent six dollars whoops let's format this as currency and then I select food so there you go your daily spending table is communicating with your monthly expenses table to do all of the tallying up so you don't have to and so this is just an efficient formula to use to really help you cut down on time um, so yeah and this is how you can create a basic simple budget using Google Sheets. Um, let's try, before we hop back into our presentation, let's try the sum if formula once more. Um, let's do it for our home expense. So again, that formula is you'll type equal and it kind of gives you a suggestion what you could do is you could actually copy and paste that in um, and then make some changes 
Oh, wait, it didn't work. Okay, let's try the formula. So it's equal sum if open parentheses, select everything under your category in your daily expense, and then you'll type a comma in quotations. You'll type your expense, home, and then you'll add a comma, and then you'll select the cells under your amount um, table and hit enter, uh, and that should work. All right, so yeah, that is how you create a basic um, monthly budget using Google Sheets. Let's turn our attention back to the PowerPoint presentation and we'll move on to step three, which Alexis will um, elaborate on. All right. All right, so step three is to save. Um, an excellent step to consider when you're budgeting for college um, and planning for your future financial goals is to get a basic checking and savings account started at a bank or a credit union. So let's talk about some of the reasons for using a bank or a credit union. Without a savings and checking account, managing your money can get expensive um, by paying for check cashing fees and buying money orders to pay bills. A checking or savings account can help keep your money safe. You can use these accounts to take advantage of direct deposit. They allow you to monitor your balance online and you'd be able to access your money from anywhere. These accounts can also help you to build a banking relationship, an important part of your credit history that we'll talk about in step four. Financial institutions offer a variety of insured saving, savings accounts, each of which pay a different interest rate. Two types of accounts that you can get are a general savings account, which earns interest and allows access of funds at any time and movement of money from account to account, or a certificate of deposit, otherwise known as a CD. These are purchased for a specified term and return principal and interest to you at the end of the term. Early withdrawal fees on these do apply um, if you take your money out early. When it comes to saving money, whether you're saving as little as $10 or $100, whatever money you can save will be beneficial to you in the long run. Set up a savings goal for yourself. This could be a daily, weekly, or monthly goal, and make sure you stick to it. There are free savings calculators you can use to help calculate how much money you can save to reach your financial goal. Once you've figured out a specific amount that you'd like to save and the frequency at which you'd like to save that money, put it aside in a savings account. It's important to separate your money from your savings. Your spending money for things such as everyday needs should be kept in a checking account. Always remember that you shouldn't use your savings unless it's an emergency. Its purpose is for long term, so treat it as an investment. Another tip you can use when thinking about saving money is to ask your parents for assistance. Maybe your parents can match your daily, weekly, or monthly savings. It doesn't hurt to ask. Lastly, when you're thinking about saving money and budgeting for college, look at student discounts to help you save. Oftentimes, you'll need to provide your student ID to receive discounts. Every little bit counts. All right, so now we're on step four, which is to build credit. So now that you're budgeting and saving as you think about college and your future careers, another step you can take is to build your credit. Examples of building credit include paying for gas for your car and any tolls on your credit card, and then paying, paying your credit card down or completely off every month. This helps to create a payment history and helps you utilize the credit card without spending an excessive amount of money. You can buy groceries with your credit card or pay monthly bills. So anything that you would use normally, that's a, slow, or a small amount. The important thing to remember is that you wanna pay it down or off every month. Don't spend money that you don't have. Keep in mind, if you're interested in getting a credit card, many financial institutions have specific requirements that you have to meet before you'll be able to qualify. For example, they might require you to have a direct deposit account through them, or they might require that you have an account open with them for a certain amount of time before you can qualify for a credit card. A good habit to develop as you're building your credit is to check your credit report annually. 
Even if you haven't used credit in the past, you might have information on your credit report and it might be incorrect. So you'd want to get that corrected as soon as possible. Your credit report shows everything about your payment history, such as late payments and your account usage. Lenders use credit reports, um, credit scores, and other information such as employment history and income history when making the decision to extend credit to you. So what is a credit score? A credit score is a statistically generated number representing the likelihood that you will repay the amount borrowed on time. The higher the score, the less risk you represent to the lender. Your credit report is used to build your credit score. A credit score is not always free, but some banks and credit companies do provide free credit scores with their account services. It's a good idea to check your score before you apply for a loan to find out if your score is eligible for the best interest rate possible. If the information on your credit report is accurate, then your score is accurate because it's based on the information from your report. So what's included in a credit report? The most important aspect of a credit report is your history of payments. Were your payments made on time or were they late? If your payments are late or delinquent, this will lower your credit score, which means you'll probably have to pay higher interest rates or you might even be denied credit. Another aspect of your credit report is the amount owed on credit accounts, which affects your score. The Federal Reserve Board of Governors publishes a guide on credit, and there's also great information on the FTC.gov website, which includes a sample dispute letter to send when you find a mistake on your credit report. So now that you know the score, there are ways to improve or repair damaged credit or establish credit for the first time. Note that recent credit history is more important on your credit score than old credit history. Keep in mind, events stay on your credit history for seven years. A secured credit card might be a good idea for building credit. It usually requires a deposit equal to your credit limit. After six months, or sometimes a year, goes by, the insured credit card company will return your deposit and your secured card becomes a regular credit card. Some people confuse these with prepaid cards, but prepaid cards do not build credit. Another type of starter account might be a retail store card or a gas card, but it's important to make sure that the card provider will report your payments to the credit reporting companies. We know that credit is a good tool to have, but always ask yourself if you're ready to take on a new credit obligation. If you want, to, you want to have credit if you ever need it, but is it better to save for some purchases like a TV or a laptop rather than use credit for them? These are great questions to ask yourself and discuss with your parents. Always think about the pros and cons of financing a purchase. Here are some quick reminders on building good credit. Develop a budget and stick to it. Getting a new credit card does not mean you have more income. Save money so you're prepared for a rainy day. Three to six months of living expenses are recommended, but it is not always possible. Pay your bills on time, keep your credit card balances low, or aim to pay them off monthly. If you pay them off monthly, you don't accrue interest charges. Check your credit reports annually and dispute any incorrect information when you see it. When budgeting for college and building wealth, you need to take steps to make sure you can build your credit responsibly and control any debt. Talk to your parents about whether or not building credit is the right decision for you at that moment in time. Here is some information about how you can go about report, reviewing your credit report. There are three major credit reporting companies and each typically have the same information since most creditors report to all three. So with that, I'll pass it back to Melin and she'll talk to you a little bit about insurance. So step five is to protect your belongings. Another expense to budget for is insurance. Insurance is um, important to use to protect your belongings and yourself. There are several types of insurance that can range from protecting something as small as a cell phone to protecting something as large as a house. Some insurance is required by law, other types are optional. Make sure you get the insurance that you need to protect yourself and your assets. 
So there are all sorts, um, all sorts of different types of insurance for yourself and your property. Let's talk about the basics of a few of them. There's auto insurance. Uh, you must have liability insurance at minimum to cover injury to other people or damage to their property. If you have a car loan, you might also be required to have physical damage coverage, especially if it's a new car. And there's home and renter's insurance. This is to protect your home and possessions in the event of fire or theft. There's also, there's also additional insurance for things such as flooding, earthquake, and other, um, other natural disasters. Another thing is home or item warranty. So this is an annual service contract that covers the repair or replacement of important appliances and system components that break down over time, such as heating, AC, um, et cetera. A good action step to take every year is to review your renters and auto insurance coverage, deductibles, and premiums. It may be time to shop around and save on your monthly premium without taking on too much additional risk. Another type of insurance is health insurance. You should always consider your budget, whether you're completing your annual enrollment in healthcare insurance uh, provider and healthcare insurance provider. Many educational institutions offer healthcare to their students. Some students might have the opportunity to, re to receive healthcare through their employer or their parents' insurance plans. So in other words, it's, it's really important that you determine which healthcare plan would be best for you and your circumstances and your budget. So all of these types of insurance are made to help protect you and your assets. So take that into consideration. Here are some links to additional resources. So the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas has resources on their website that relates to money management and college and careers. Check out buildingwealth.org for information on money management. Um, Navigate is the curriculum that helps you explore college and careers. There's a portion that focuses on the financial aspects of higher education, and you can check that out at this um, address. So our next resource is Ferguson's Career Guidance Center. This is a database that you can find at planolibrary.org. It contains all sorts of information on different career paths, as well as information on college planning and financial aid. There's a financial aid directory that you can search based on different criteria, such as major or student profile. You'll need a Plano Public Library card to access this to access this database, but you can access it from home. Big Future College Board is another great resource. There's a lot of information that pertains to financial aid that might be beneficial to you. And our last resource is our blog, planolibrarylearns.org. Um, we have a simple budgets using Excel uh, program recording that we've done in the past. Um, so you can check that out. We also have some upcoming library programs that we wanted to mention. We have another Budgeting with Excel program coming up on August the 5th. The time um, has yet to be determined, but keep your eye out for that. Um, another program that we have is Google Sheets Monthly Budgeting, and that's going to be on August the 31st. Again, the time is yet to be determined, but we do um, suggest you check that out as well. All of these are going to be available um, through Zoom, and you'll need to register for them on planolibrary.org. So once again, thank you for taking the time to attend our virtual program. You can find more information and more resources on our website, planolibrary.org, as well as our blog, planolibrarylearns.org. And that concludes our presentation. Are there any questions? Let's see, I'll go back through the chat and You can find the link to register for the programs um, on our website and through social media for the upcoming programs. Someone had a question about registering for the 
programs that are coming up. The upcoming events, I don't believe they've been sent out in the, in the newsletters yet, but I would say um, make sure to check that. Um, once we have more information about the timing, I believe it should be listed under um, the monthly program where you can kind of scroll through and see uh, what programs are taking place on what days and um, you'll be able to register that way. The link for the spreadsheet, um, we had someone ask if we could put it in there. It'll be available after the presentation. Are there any more questions? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.